My name is Rachel Keller. I've been married for 10 years, my husband is a hard worker and very family-oriented. He's quite meticulous and sometimes we go out as a family on his days off, just a regular family, really. He also treats my parents with great respect, and I think he's just the perfect husband. However, I recently caught him coming out of a hotel with his mistress. I couldn't believe my eyes, but it was unmistakably my husband, Stephen. The mistress looked younger than me, radiant. Oh, so he has someone he likes. That was my first thought. I'm pretty straightforward, often told by my parents that I'm super positive, clear and open. Perhaps because of this, my motto has always been to accept what comes and not chase what goes. When we got married, I had decided that if Stephen ever fell in love with someone else, I would gracefully step aside. And with all the men I've dated before, whenever they said they found someone else, I've always let go completely and moved on. So, it should be the same this time. But the fact is, seeing them arm in arm, looking so close, it really hurts. But. There he is, looking so happy. Seeing my husband's face like that, I felt a storm raging inside me. So I approached them. Stephen, not expecting to run into his wife in front of the hotel, couldn't hide his shock. Rachel. Huh? Who's this? The woman looked back and forth, between me and Stephen, clearly puzzled. No wonder she was confused. Stephen. Rachel, this is, well. I was in the way of your happiness, wasn't I? Those were the words that came out of my mouth. No, it's not like that. There's a reason for this. It's okay. I'm sorry. With that. I turned on my heel. Stephen was shouting, no, it's not what it looks like, but the woman clung to his arm, preventing him from chasing after me. I started running away from Stephen. After running for a while, when I was sure he wasn't following, I stopped to catch my breath. Then, I reflected on what had just happened. No matter how many times I think about it, him coming out of that hotel means it's an affair. Or maybe it's serious. If that's the case, then he has chosen someone else over me. I began to walk slowly, pondering how things got to this point. No matter how straightforward I am, the betrayal still hurts. Although I used to decide on breakups easily, now that we are married, separating is painful. But he has chosen someone else, so I guess it's inevitable. I try to convince myself but my vision blurred all the same. Before I knew it, tears were streaming down my face. Our marriage was blissful. Even when I was busy with work, Stephen never complained and willingly did the nursery drop-offs and pickups. When our child had a fever, he'd take time off work to care for her. He always accepted my suggestions to go out as a family on weekends with a smile. Despite some men boasting about being the breadwinner, he never did that. Instead, he appreciated that our lifestyle was possible because we both worked. That's why I was able to focus on my career, start my own company, and expand the business. Out of gratitude to him, I bought a new house for my in-laws and gave him more than enough pocket money. No matter how tired I was, I tried to handle housework, childcare, and work to prevent him from getting stressed. I made time to visit his parents' house and show them their grandchild. It was all for my husband, who always cared for me and for our family. I believed our life together would last forever. I strive to be a good wife for that very reason. But perhaps Stephen had some complaints. I've heard that a husband's affair is sometimes blamed on the wife. That it's the wife's fault, leading the husband to be captivated by another woman. In the end, it's all my fault. Perhaps he had grievances, but just never expressed them. Maybe I was too complacent, thinking everything was fine and depending too much on him. If that's the case, then maybe separating is really for the best, for his sake. If I love him, I should cleanly break it off and wish for his happiness. 
I know this without anyone telling me. Yet, for some reason, the storm in my heart won't subside. Why? No matter how many times I ask myself, I can't find an answer. I keep walking, and seeing other couples makes the pain surge anew. I had that phase with him once, so where did it go wrong? Why did it come to this? I always thought family was the most important thing, but it seems he wanted to prioritize being a man over family. This is a betrayal. A betrayal of the marriage vow. The anger of being betrayed. Yet, what I feel is not anger but pain and sorrow. And regret for not being able to make my husband happy. How could this happen? Then, a new storm hit. What about our daughter? It's not just me Fia's been betrayed. What will happen to her? She adores her dad and thinks living with him is her happiness. Yet, he betrayed her too. Should I forgive him? Should I? Thinking of our child only deepens the agony. Lost, I find myself reflecting on our married life. Those happy ten years. They weigh heavily on me. If only I could pretend I never saw it. If only I could act as if nothing happened. Would everything then stay the same? But can I truly call that happiness? As night fell, I walked towards the home where my daughter was waiting. When I saw the lights of our house, I stopped. And there, I made a decision for the sake of my daughter waiting for me. Stephen came home late at night. What had he been doing? Spending a pleasant time with his mistress, perhaps? While waiting restlessly for him, I cooked dinner as usual, fed our daughter, faked a smile to conceal my feelings, and put her to bed at 9 p.m. with a goodnight kiss. Was there ever a night as painful as this? No, even on nights when I was too tired to move, none were as painful as this. The storm inside calmed, leaving a gaping void in its place. A hole so deep and dark. As my daughter fell asleep, I placed the divorce papers on the table and waited for Stephen's return. When I saw the lights of the house, I turned back, thinking of the divorce papers I had picked up from the office. To think that in the tenth year, I'd be looking at such a document. I picked up the pen several times but couldn't write, sighing deeply. I had just finished writing my name. And then Stephen returned. I greeted him with a smile, welcome home. Ah, yeah, I'm back. Rachel, about what happened today. Stephen must have been pondering how to start this conversation. He spoke as if making a resolution. Removing his coat, placing his bag down, his actions as usual. It's not what you think. Please stop. I don't need excuses. Because it's my fault, isn't it? I was desperately trying to smile. Why? Why is it your fault, Rachel? Because when a husband cheats, it's the wife's fault, right? Your heart wandered because I didn't understand you, Stephen. It's all my fault. That's not true. And about her. I'm sorry. When I hear excuses, I just get angry. I don't want to yell or fight. So, let's end this cleanly. End it? Why? Because you have someone you love, don't you? Why should I stay with you when you have someone else? That won't make you happy. I don't want to leave you, Rachel. And there's our daughter Mary too. Don't talk about separating. What are you saying? You chose her over me and Mary, didn't you? Yet you won't leave either of us. Don't you feel sorry for her? That's just sad for her. No, it's different. It's not that serious with her. Not serious? That's a lie. I don't know what kind of relationship you want, but I think she's serious. I've had you all to myself for 10 years. So now, I'll step aside for her. I think that's best for both of us. I want you to be happy.
I am happy enough. Please, sign this. Your happiness is my happiness. No, I'm sorry. Please, I don't want to break up this family. It's not about breaking, Stephen. You're just starting a new life. I don't think of it as breaking. I love you so much that I just want you to be happy. Please sign this. I don't want to stand in your way any longer. Rachel. No matter how much Stephen said he didn't want a divorce or tried to talk about starting over, I had no intention of stopping the divorce. Finally, Stephen gave in and signed the papers. I'm sorry, Rachel. It's all because I harbored feelings for another woman that I made you write this divorce paper. It's okay, don't worry about it. Remember what I said when we got married? If you ever fell in love with someone else, we would part ways cleanly. I never thought you could actually do it. I never thought it would be this painful to decide to leave you. But if staying with me means you miss out on happiness, then it's better we part ways. Why can you sacrifice yourself so much? You should be scolding me, throwing your anger at me. It would be easier for me. You might find it easier, but I won't do something just to make you feel better. I don't want to end in a fight. If you and she can be happy, then that's my happiness. So I won't throw my emotions at you. I'm not that kind. I don't think of forgiving you for betraying our daughter. Being treated kindly can be painful, right? You care about me that much. Rachel, you're like a goddess. A goddess, huh? I wonder what happens when you betray a goddess. Divine retribution can be quite painful, you know. But then again, it's not a god but me, a human, who'll deliver it. Before we divorce, there's something I want to know. What is it? Why did you have feelings for another woman? What was wrong with me? No, Rachel, there was nothing wrong with you. You were a perfect wife. It was just my weakness. So, I wasn't at fault? Yeah, maybe too perfect, if anything. Too perfect? Yeah, you were too perfect, and it made me lose confidence. Maybe that's why my feelings shifted towards something imperfect. What? That's no excuse at all. So, can you tell me about her? Her name, age, what does she do? Her name is Sarah Parker. She's 35. Works at a cafe. I used to frequent that cafe. And that's where we became acquainted. I thought she was cute and struck up a conversation. We started going out for meals, watching movies, and gradually, my feelings shifted. She must be very cute then. Yeah, exactly. All right, thank you. You can have this luxury condo. What? I'll be taking custody of our daughter. That's enough for me. It's not easy to find a place like this, and you'd want to live in a nice home as newlyweds, right? What will you do, Rachel? I'll look for another apartment. But can you wait a week? I need that time to find a new place. No, you should stay here, Rachel. It's too big here. And living in this room, filled with our memories, would be too painful for me. I see. All right, thank you. She'll probably be happy about it. No, don't mention it. I'll fully support your happiness. I said this with a broad smile on my face. The next day, I visited my in-law's house. To apologize to George and Diana, who had always treated me like their own daughter and loved my daughter, for not being able to keep Stephen's heart. George, Diana, I'm really sorry. I couldn't hold on to Stephen's heart, it's all my fault. He had an affair, really. Yes, so I got him to sign the divorce papers. 
I'll be leaving the current apartment within a week. Then, he can remarry her with no holds barred. How could this happen? Why divorce? It's my fault. So, I thought stepping aside is the best way for Stephen to be happy. It's not your fault, Rachel. He's the one who did wrong. Well, if you can't forgive that, then divorce is inevitable, I guess. I'm truly sorry. For being such an imperfect wife and causing George and Diana distress. I spoke earnestly, blaming myself for my husband's infidelity and apologizing sincerely. George and Diana understood and said it's Stephen Fu should be apologizing. Poor Mary, if that's the case, it can't be helped. Yes. I'll have custody of our daughter. I'm grateful to him for leaving her with me. A mother's care is best, better than being raised by a stepmother. Thank you. I expressed my gratefulness sincerely and left my in-law's house, never to return. Leaving there, I went straight to the district court to submit the divorce papers. Then I began looking for a new apartment, moving out of the familiar condo within a week. After moving, I decided to meet with the mistress. She must have heard about the divorce from Stephen. She appeared before me, looking triumphant. You're Sarah Parker, right? Yes, that's right. I submitted the divorce papers about a week ago. I believe they have been accepted, so you can remarry now. Huh? You're planning to remarry, right? Yes, I suppose. So, why did you want to meet me? Just to inform you about the divorce. I have to make sure you know you can remarry since he might not have told you. Huh, I knew about the divorce, but I didn't think you'd actually do that. Are you really that kind? Well, Fu knows. But I've decided to support you too. Why would you support us? I took your husband, you know? True, you could say you took him, but he chose you. So, I've decided to support you too in finding happiness. If you don't become happy, then my stepping aside would be meaningless. Ha, huh, you really are strange. She called me foolish. But Fu is truly the foolish one. I don't think affairs are as sweet as she believes. Do you know about my husband's job? Job? Yes, what does he do? I don't know the details, but I know he was headhunted by a major company and became a department head. Yes, that's right. He's a department head with a high salary. Letting go of a man with such a high salary, are you okay with that? I've lived with him for 10 years. Now it's your turn to be happy with him. I'm fine with it. Such a kind person. But I will take alimony and child support. That's fine. He's a department head, after all. I don't know how much the alimony is, but it's probably nothing for him. Child support isn't much monthly either. Maybe he could pay the lump sum amount until your child reaches adulthood. That way, we can sever ties. That would be helpful, but it should be until she graduates college, not just until she's an adult. That's no problem at all. Don't you think he has enough money for that? If it means cutting ties with you, I'd prefer he pays it all at once. Then please suggest that to him. I will. He listens to everything I say. Good. We've moved out, so you two should live in that luxury condo. Perfect for newlyweds, right? He said he'd take the condo, so I guess that's where we'll live. Stephen is a kind man who values family, so I believe you'll be happy. I suppose so. She looked at me triumphantly again. But if he were truly kind, this situation wouldn't have occurred. A genuinely family-oriented person wouldn't stray for such trivial reasons. She must think she'll be fine. It's not that simple. 
I wanted to flash a triumphant smile too, but it wasn't the time for that yet, so I just kept a small smile. But my praising Stephen seemed odd to her, prompting a question. I get that you're a nice person, but how can you forgive being cheated on? It's my fault for not keeping his interest on me. He said he hated my perfection. Must have felt suffocated, I guess. Not so perfect if I couldn't see that, huh? Hmm, you blame yourself, huh? But he's a catch, a department head, aren't you worried about letting that go? If you're happy, that's all that matters to me. I value happiness over money. Besides, he gave me custody. That's enough for me. You really are strange, almost foolish. Are you planning a wedding? Of course. Well, I know someone who owns a big wedding venue. Booking there usually takes months. Would you like me to put in a word? Might get you a discount. Really? That would be great. Yes, they have gorgeous wedding dresses too. You want a lavish wedding, right? Sure, doesn't have to be cheap though, he's a department head after all. But I'd like to get married soon. Got it. Let me know when you're ready, and I'll arrange everything. Any time is good, we're ready to get married now. That sounds exciting. You're such a good person. Am I? I hope it's the best wedding ever. That night, I heard from Stephen. He was excited, saying Sarah told him about the wedding venue arrangement. You're handling the venue too. Yes, my friend owns it. They said they'd make it the best wedding possible, even though it's usually a six-month wait. It's that busy. Yes, it's a famous place. But they promised to make room for you. Thank you. I don't know how to repay you. It's me Fu's at fault here. It's fine. I'd do anything for your happiness. I'll pay the alimony and child support in full. It's manageable. Good to hear, that eases my mind. Sari is happy, but she hates that we're still connected. So, paying in full seems best. I'm glad. That will make life easier for me. I might pay a bit more for the alimony. Really? Are you sure? Yes, of course. Just don't regret it later. Huh? Don't worry, seeing you too happy makes me happy too. Two weeks later, a grand wedding was held, and Sarah was thrilled with her exquisite wedding dress. Sitting in the spotlight, Sarah and Stephen looked blissfully happy, like the happiest people in the world. I sat in the audience, smirking at the couple. After the wedding, as I saw them off to their honeymoon, I thought, now, the counterattack begins. They think they can be happy? You're being naive. Sure enough, when Stephen returned from the honeymoon and went to work, he found a disciplinary notice on his desk. Shocked by the sudden action, he rushed to the CEO's office. But the CEO said he didn't know the reasons as it was the chairman's decision. Stephen insisted, but couldn't change the outcome. Dejected, he gathered his belongings and left the company. When he got home, he found a bill from the wedding venue. Opening it, he called me, his voice almost a scream. His voice sounded like a scream, almost. Oh, Stephen, what's up? I've been fired. Out of nowhere. That's tough. I don't understand why I was let go. Really? No idea why. None at all. I haven't made any big mistakes, and now this disciplinary action. The chairman made the decision, and I can even meet him to find out why. The CEO just tells me to leave. Well, that's unfortunate, isn't it? It's not just unfortunate. But, come on, saying that. And now, there's this huge bill from the wedding venue you introduced. That makes sense. 
It was a grand wedding. Sarah's wedding dress alone must have cost around $40,000. I thought it was quite a pricey one you picked. That's why the bill is so enormous. And on top of being fired. But the venue can't be helped. Being fired and the venue are unrelated. Can we get the venue price reduced? That's impossible. They already gave us a friend's discount. Can't ask for more. But I don't have the money now. You had the money for such an expensive wedding, right? That was before I get fired. And now I'm even getting billed for the condo rent. Well, of course. Why? Shouldn't it be paid for? It's a rental, Stephen. Rental? I thought we bought this condo. Didn't you know? It's a rental. Since we could rent the luxury apartment for a reasonable price, I passed it on to you. You can't rent the penthouse and a tower for that amount, you know. But I don't need it. It's fine for a family, but it's just me and my daughter. I can't believe it's a rental. You thought you owned it? Yes, exactly. That's unfortunate. But now there's nothing you can do about it. If it bothers you, just move out. She's complaining. Why do we have to move out of the luxury condo when we just got it? I told her we have no money, but she doesn't care. Plus, we paid for the honeymoon with credit cards, and the bill is coming in two months. There's no way we can pay it. Well, that's your problem, not mine. You were the ones who spent the money. But this means misery, not happiness. Can you lend us some? Give back the alimony and child support I paid in full. That way, we can get by for now. No way. I'll never see that money again if I lend it to you. Oh man. Why was I fired? Because you had an affair. What? How do you know the reason? If it's true, what a terrible chairman. Isn't firing someone over an affair too much? Well, the company doesn't tolerate such behavior. Why do you know all this? Simple, because I'm the chairman. What? No way. I knew you started a business, but chairman. How come it's my company? Huh? Realized it? When you were thinking of quitting, why do you think a completely different company offered you a position as a head, huh? I thought it was because of my skills. Come on, that's not it. I arranged for your headhunting. What? But you said you were just an office worker. I started that company. Once it was on track, I wanted to focus on family, so I made my cousin the CEO. In exchange, I became the chairman and told you I was an office worker. That way, your pride was intact, and I could take care of our daughter. This is insane. I was just dancing in your palm. Exactly. But firing me is too harsh. You're the one who betrayed, remember? You said you wanted me to be happy. Yes, I wanted you to be happy. Now the shock of hitting rock bottom will be greater, right? That's cruel. Happiness has its downside. But you chose that woman, so you'll be fine, right? Good luck. Stephen kept saying, this can't be real, but I was smirking triumphantly. He kept contacting me to let him return to work, but of course, I refused. After enduring such frustration, why would I offer a helping hand now? There's no way I would do that. Ultimately, unable to find a job and faced with the enormous wedding and honeymoon bills, plus the alimony he owed Sarah, Stephen had to take out large loans. Forced by Sarah's insistence to stay in the luxury condo, they eventually had to move to a rundown apartment. Sarah is constantly ripping into Stephen, saying, this is such a scam, practically every day. Stephen finally found a job at a small factory as a temporary worker. 
Ridiculed by colleagues, his pride shattered. Even working himself to exhaustion, his salary is only about one-tenth of what he earned when he was a department head. When he asked Sarah to work too, she retorted, don't joke. This isn't what I signed up for. Eventually, overworked to the point of collapse and needing hospitalization, he couldn't afford it. Sarah, disgusted, divorced him after six months. Now he lives alone in that shabby apartment. I return to my job. I'm teaming up with the CEO while I serve as the chairman. Though the condo is smaller than before, the view with my daughter is still the best, proving once again that luxury condos are superior.